first project that we're going to kick off on this channel is plans to build a very comfortable 8x8 hunting blind. Some of our techniques are unconventional. I'm not that good of a carpenter, but I have learned through the years how to build solid hunting blinds. Hunting blinds are the most important thing for a hunter to be comfortable in the woods because the more time that you're comfortable, the more hours you'll spend uh, in the woods and the more success you will have. So I hope you enjoy this project. We're gonna go step by step. We're gonna give you building plans, cut list, the whole, the whole package. Here is the supply list you will need. Please simply print this out and use it as a reference. Please note that the supply list number for each unit may be slightly different depending on what you decide to do as you watch this video. The very first step is to take two of your 4x8 plywood panels and cut them in half. All you have to do is tie together one of the 2x8 plywood panels with one of the 4x8 plywood panels. This will create an 8x6 wall. It is super easy to bring together the two pieces of plywood. Simply cut your 2x4 studs per the dimensions indicated in this slide and then take the studs using your 2 inch screws and secure them to the plywood. It is critical to leave a 1.5 inch gap at the ends as indicated here. I will explain why this is important in a little bit. Before securing the 2x4 studs onto the panels of plywood, I think it is incredibly helpful to pre-drill pilot holes using the Craig system, which I will demonstrate here. Using these pilot holes, it becomes super easy to bring together the two walls as you construct the square of your blind. Okay, now we're ready to drill the pilot holes in each one of the two by four six foot vertical posts that will be secured to our front and back walls. And these pilot holes will allow us to connect the side wall stud to the front wall stud. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I can't do this easily without one of these jig systems. And this has been probably the best investment I've ever made in basic carpentry. This one's made by Craig. They're not that expensive. There's some even less expensive ones that are similar to this that you can like buy at Home Depot or something like that. But these are awesome. And basically you're given a uh, drill bit and you get a guide that you can slide up and down um, uh, depending on the thickness of the wood. And this little measurement uh, recess area allows you to do that. And you change your angle based on your thickness of the wood here. Uh, I have it all preset for a two by four. So all you have to do is put your wood right into, into this little holder here and secure it like that. Stick your drill bit in, make sure this is nice and tight, and then start drilling your holes. And I'm going to do this about every four or five inches up and down uh, this uh, stud. And again, this is going to allow us to connect this, which is going to be on the front wall, to uh, one of the side, the side wall, which you'll see in just a second. So here I'm going to drill a hole. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Just like that, okay? And then um, I'm just gonna do that every four or five inches or so. All right, so there you have it. Okay, so here we are, step one, are you excited? You can see that I'm standing on one 4x8 pressure treated panel and I've already cut one of these in half to give myself a 2x8 panel here on my right. And the idea here is we're going to bring these together with 2x4 studs and you're going to see how that works in just a second. Okay, so uh, here we are. We've got our two uh, panels together to make a six foot wall. This is going to be wall one and we're going to get ready to secure our vertical two by four posts. The critical step here is to leave a, a one and a half inch gap on the edge here because when we, when we bring in the side wall that is going to allow that stud to lie flush with this one 
and then these pilot holes are going are to allow you to put a screw in and bring the two studs together, and that's actually going to be a critical stabilization move. So um, all you have to do is measure a, uh, uh, a uh, one and a half inch um, uh, gap here and draw a line. And one easy way to do that is just to take your um, uh, two, uh, two by four and lay it right on the edge, um, and then use a pencil or a marker to make your line. And I've already done that. So I'm going to get this all lined up. You will do the same exact thing on the other side. So sorry about the plumber's crack malfunction, but I think all is good. The next step is to take the 2x4 86 inch beam and secure it to the top part of the wall. You will use your 2 inch screws for this as well. Okay, then we'll do the lower uh, part now to the, the bottom cell, and it matches the top. Um, the pilot holes allow you to screw into the decking material this way. Put the glue on first, and we'll just secure this. I like to add one extra support beam to the uh, walls and it's really not that tricky. Uh, if you have a basic miter saw you can do this. It's a 45 degree cut. This is going to be uh, 38 inches long uh, and you want to make the, the cuts kind of mirror image of, of each other. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So it looks like that and we're going to use this to support the, the top piece to the lower piece. And this will be the other side. Okie doke, so uh, here's a, a support beam um, and it's 38 inches long and we have 45 angle de degree cuts on each end and you can see it just kind of fits in beautifully like that, right? And we just got to secure it now. Okay, so we have the wall essentially completed but we need to put the window in. And this is kind of like an important step. You don't have to do this now, but I kind of want to because the plywood is already on the ground and it's easy to work with. And you'll see what I'm going to do in just a second. Um, but basically, all you do is make your marks for your window whatever dimensions you want. Um, I pre-bought a set of uh, windows from Shadow Hunter, and uh, it uh, specifies the hole that you have to cut. It's uh, 10 inches uh, deep and 34 and 38 inches uh, long, and so I just followed the directions. I marked out uh, the outline, and I'm going to use a router with a three-quarter inch bit to, to cut this uh, hole. You can use whatever you want. You could probably use a, a jigsaw. You could use um, uh, a circular saw, whatever your uh, fancy is. This is not a necessary step, but I like to install a 17-inch horizontal support made from a 2x4 piece of wood. I secure this to the diagonal support beam that we previously installed. This will require a 45 degree miter cut as I demonstrated in the previous video. I will then use 
two inch screws to secure this horizontal support to the plywood on the other side. You are going to repeat all of the steps and create an identical wall for wall two. Wall two will be exactly the same as wall one. Okay, I'm trying something a little bit different with um, uh, the next wall. If you have a tractor with forks, you can support the four by eight panel on your forks and then just have the two by four panel supported on some saw horses like this. So I'm just gonna walk a little bit closer here so you can see uh, where they're joined. So right there, this is, um, this is the four by eight and this is the two by eight. This was on the ground before, but I think it might just be easier to work like this. I'm learning as I go as well. And you can see if I kind of pan down underneath, you can see I've got the forks coming off of the, the tractor there and they stop about right there. Um, and then my uh, saw horses support the next piece, the two by eight. So there you go, let's see if this works a little bit better. I'm gonna do the identical work that I did for that first wall, but just now elevated a little bit. Okay, so I moved over to just a little bit of a flatter area because it was easier to set up the tractor with the uh, saw horses this way. Uh, so if you have a tractor, I recommend, uh, I, rec I recommend this technique. We've completed walls one and two, which are identical. Now we're gonna work on walls three um, and four, which are identical as well. Now the only difference is that you're gonna leave a little bit of a different gap on the edge when you put the two by four stud. And I'm gonna do a close up video of what I'm talking about with the little simulator uh, blocks. Uh, Cause the key here is that the two sides have to come together tightly so it's weatherproof. And I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain what I mean in a, in a video in just a second. Okay, so this is a little close-up demonstration of what I'm trying to communicate about the edges of these, of these walls. So this is the one we just did for walls one and two. And this is, this is the, the two by four, the vertical two by four. And you have one and a half inches overhang there. So this is our front wall. So this is inside of the blind and then this is outside of the blind. And when we do the next two walls, so walls three and four, which are the side walls, um, you're gonna need to only have three quarters of an inch extending out from the two by four. This was one and a half inches, but this is actually just three, this is, this is just three quarters of an inch. That's one and a half, three quarters, one and a half. And the reason why that's important is you can see this comes together nicely like a jigsaw puzzle. So this is my inside wall. It's gonna go just like this. And if you remember, we drew those pilot holes. So we'll be securing this stud to that stud. And we have a nice tight seal if you look, I'm gonna turn the whole thing like this. It's beautiful. So nice and tight. And that's the three quarter inch overhang. We'll line it up on that, on the plywood on the other side. So there it is, boom. You can see from the diagram that walls three and four are similar to walls one and two, except that the gap is smaller, that 0.75 inch gap and therefore the horizontal beam is going to be longer at 87.5 inches instead of 86 inches. Okay, so all we're gonna do now is measure the three quarter inch over, make a couple lines and connect them and that'll be our marker for. Two by four stud, glue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I use a, um, a clamp to help even out the plywood into the stud because there's a little bit of you know natural warp in this stuff and it, everything doesn't line up exactly right. So we're gonna put this right to our three quarter inch line.
matter. We're just going to secure our cross um, support beams. I put some glue on already. Um, and one thing I want to mention here is this is a little uneven. It doesn't lay flush. So, because the wood's a little warped. I love these Craig clamps because they're big. And so what I'll sometimes do is, is just use one of these to kind of really get it nice and flat up against the plywood. Put a screw in on this side and then repeat the process on the other side. It's just a little trick to deal with wood that's a little bit maybe warped or not even, which is seems like most of the time. <laughs> At this point, you will repeat the same exact process that you just did for wall four as you did for wall three. The only thing that I would recommend at this point is to not put in the 17 inch horizontal supports until after the windows and or the door is cut. Everybody will have a different design and that horizontal support could get in the way. The other important point is that the 17 inch horizontal support may be different depending on your window design. It may be longer or shorter. So simply cut this per your specifications. Okay, so this next part is kind of important. This is the door. And what we're going to do is uh, we, we're, we're going to just cut out uh, the door from the plywood and we'll use that extra plywood to construct, to construct the door. Um, and really, it doesn't really matter uh, what, what dimensions you like. Just measure something that you feel comfortable um, getting, getting into, and I'll, I'll post um, uh, the exact dimensions I use. Uh, but, but, but you can see I drew a, a line here, and I'm just going to jigsaw this out. Okay, uh, for the um, door frame, I like to use these two by fours in a vertical way to frame the door because when you close the door, you want it to be nice and tight up against uh, something. And this is what, what I like to do. So you can see I have kind of a weird cut here because this is gonna fit into the, uh, the door frame. And what I wanna do is um, show you how I make, these, make this cut. Okay, so you start out by just making a regular uh, 45 degree uh, cut. So you turn your saw like such, and then just, just kind of make this cut first. Then measure down two and a quarter inches from the, the top, and then draw a little line across. We're just going to cut off that piece now, like such. Go back to zero degrees and just cut this off. And then we just want to measure 65 inches down because that'll be the, the height of the, uh, the stud and uh, make a Make a mark there. All right, and then we just cut that off to 65. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna frame out this door now. Um, so um, I cut those pieces like I just demonstrated to you in the workshop, and those are gonna fit like right, like here, right in there. And then you'll see there's a little gap here because this is the inside of the blind, um, and so this will be the inset of the door. And when the, out, when the door closes from the outside, it'll kind of catch on here. All 
and then we're just going to put the header on the door right here. And, it, and, the, and the exact measurements of these um, cuts of wood would depend on the size of your door. So if you want to design a different door than I have here, you would just uh, change uh, the length of these, etc. Okay friends, um, so I'm not going to go through step by step uh, how to do wall 4 because wall 4 is exactly the same as wall 3 uh, with the exception of however you may want to do the windows. And uh, again I bought some window kits, they were of different sizes so I'm just going to follow the specifications. And one hint here is that you may not want any window at all because this, this wall in your hunting area may actually back up to some woods and you don't have any shots on this side. And it's probably better just to keep it nice and tight. But the point here is that wall four is the same as wall three. And I'm just gonna cut the window uh, here because I do want, on my hunting blind, I want windows on all sides. But after that, we're gonna build the uh, deck and then we're gonna get everything out to the hunting property and I'll show you how to assemble it all and make the roof. Alright, so I, lay, I laid our door right into the inset here, and I just bought some hinges at Home Depot, and I'm going to secure the hinges in first on the, the outside. I, I find this easiest to do on the ground, because then the door's not swinging, and you don't have to put it on a holder, and you can actually see that it, it clears the uh, edges. This definitely isn't artistic, it's uneven my cuts, but it'll get the job done, the deer won't care. So I had some of these um, screws that were meant for roofing material, and they had uh, these little, um, I don't know what you call them, washers and these little spongy things. And there was only one per screw, and I, um, I actually put two together because, remember, the board is only three quarters inch thick, so you don't want like a long screw sticking through uh, to the other side so you can get cut. So it's just kind of things like this where you can improvise if you have some screws that aren't of the right size, which is kind of... This makes it kind of fun um, doing the project. I'm going to screw these in now. Okay, so we're done. Uh, I like to stack my four walls, uh, one on top of the other, awaiting transport to my hunting area. You can actually manipulate these walls with one person, uh, but obviously two people makes it a lot easier. If you've got a tractor, it's even easier. Uh, and our next step is to assemble the deck upon which these four walls will be assembled. So here they are nice and neat. Congratulations on a job well done thus far. Please pay careful attention to the deck specifications. You will want to use 2x6x8 pressure treated boards. It is critical to measure and cut according to these plans. The hunting blind is actually not 8 feet in its full front length. This is because of how we brought together the plywood panels. It's actually eight feet plus 1.5 inches. 
Therefore, when you put together the deck boards here, you will want to cut the two by six, eight foot beam, which is normally 96 inches into a beam that is 95.5 inches. Because when you bring together the width of the two side beams that are 1.5 each, you will match the front dimension of the hunting blind. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna finish the decking now. And I used some scrap wood here that I had from an old um, deck that I pulled apart. And I just cut it to fit. So these are uh, two by six pressure treated beams. These are kind of old, the ones on the outside are kind of new. And you really only need um, three inside. And it doesn't have to be measured exactly proportional throughout. Just kind of put them where you think it makes sense and then screw them in. You can see I'm not the biggest guy. I'm not the biggest guy, but um, uh, but you can handle plywood by yourself. You don't need help. I will get help when we're erecting the the walls, or I'll use my tractor. Uh, but now I'm just going to put this uh, three quarter inch uh, plywood onto my uh, my deck. Okie doke, so I'm gonna just put a little, extend, a little extension on here um, because when I screw the other, the other plywood in, I want it to, to seat on something. All right, we get the next piece of plywood on. And we'll just screw that on. It's done with the, the deck. Okay, this is kind of funny. I didn't actually follow my own instructions. As you recall, the front 2x8 eight, 8 foot beam has to be shortened by 1.5 inches. I forgot to do that when I built my deck. So if you follow my cut list, you will be fine. But the reason why the two pieces of plywood don't fit on my deck is because it's too long in the front. I hope you can appreciate that. This means I'll have to use a little bit of Yankee ingenuity to fix the problem and fill the gap. Then basically all I did to fill the gap was take a piece of wood and secure it to the overhang. I did this for mostly cosmetic reasons and somewhat of a functional reason because the blind will rest on this piece of wood as well. But once again, all of this can be avoided if you follow the cut list as I demonstrated earlier. Okay, here I am with my buddy John. Um, it's, this is really a two-person job to get these walls up. And we uh, put one of our um, large window walls on the frame. We just lifted it right up. And then we're just gonna screw this in and John's gonna hold it uh, why I screw it in and then we'll get the side wall and we'll show you what we mean by that in just a second Okay, a little trick here um, just because we want to let go of the wall and not have it fall forward uh, We just put a little stabilizing 2x4 there and I screwed in along the edge here already to the base of those pilot holes So we have an extra level of security there. We're gonna put some more bug spray on and then do the second wall Okay, so we got the second wall on, and this was real easy. John held that wall up, and then we got the, the corner screws in right here, like that. And this brought this in nice and tight. And we're not going to do the bottom uh, yet, because we want a little bit of flexibility in that wall to make sure it's nice and square on the back end. So that's next up. All right, get back so you can see a shot. All right, here we are thus far. Wall one in the front, and then a side wall. Okay, so the third wall is up now, right here, um, and we secured it again uh, along the, uh, the vertical joining point. We did not screw in the bottom uh, there yet because we want some flexibility to make sure it's nice and square with the last wall. We did put our bottom screws in the second 
on the second side wall already, so that's nice and secure. And you can see, John, let go just so we can see. You know, we don't need the supports anymore, so it should be self, self sustaining. Okay, thanks to my buddy John, we got the last wall up, and I'm just gonna do a walk around here. We got all four sides screwed together from those pilot holes that I showed you about before. So we're looking pretty good. And then the last thing we'll have to do, obviously, is the roof, um, which is easy, and then the windows, which are a little bit more complicated, which I will show you about later. So there's all four walls. Okay, so now we're gonna start building the roof. Uh, and then after that, we'll do the windows. So here we have our shiplap six, six inch uh, pine boards. They're, got, they're eight foot and they're just gonna go right across the top. Um, and then we'll kind of secure the perimeter from the pilot holes on the inside that we, we placed when we built our, our walls. So I'll show you that in just a second. So all we're going to do now is go around the, the edge and screw the corner of each of these um, shiplap pine boards into uh, the 2x4 header up there. That'll make this nice and secure and it'll, it'll form a great base for us to, to put our, our roofing material on. Okay, so I got the... The, uh, the roll roofing on top here was a little heavy, but I was able to do it by myself. You're going to want a little bit of an overlap so you can fold this down to staple it so there's a nice runoff for the water. So I don't know, I'm going to give it a little bit more than, than I have now. Maybe something like that. A couple inches, and I can just fold that over at the end. So then we're just going to roll this thing out. Like that. And I'm just going to come down here. Okay, you can see I'm working by myself, so this is kind of heavy, so I just let it rest on top of um, my ladder, and I'm just going to use my utility knife to cut this a little bit, um, you know, overhang, and I, unfortunately, I pulled the whole thing a little bit this way, so I'm going to give myself some extra length so I can pull it back that way. Okay, so just a regular staple gun. I'm going to fold this down. This is why you have it overhang just a little bit. I have an extra piece of board here uh, for my shiplap that I, I, I'm not going to use. It's, it's kind of damaged, but I thought it would be fun to put it as a little trim here to support the little overhang a little bit better. Uh, and then when I paint it, it may look nice or stain it. Okay, I just want to show you here, I put three beams in, these are just two by fours. And I did that because um, it, I want the roof to be a little bit more supported. And I just want to give you a close, a close look here. I have these little ties you can buy at Home Depot uh, and really kind of secures it in nicely there. Okay. Okay, it's a window day, and um, you know you can do whatever you want with your windows. You can leave them open, um, never put any windows in. You can put uh, something uh, like some sort of plastic, some sort of mesh, uh, camo. I like to install more professional windows because I want this thing uh, watertight, and um, I want to be able to sleep in here at night as well um, for morning hunts. So I like the Shadow Hunter um, system. I bought the crossbow one because it's bigger, and I think that uh, is better regardless of whether or not you're um, using a, a, shot, a, sh a shotgun, a rifle, uh, a crossbow. And uh, it's really pretty easy to install, um, and uh, you just follow the directions. I'll show you just kind of quickly here uh, what I do. 
Uh, basically, the first step is to put these um, outside rails on, which um, this window right here, which is the out exterior window to protect the inside, will slide up and down on. So you want to install them with the screws they provide, uh, just so it's, it's easy for this thing to go up and down. All right, so that's the first step. I'm not going to show you how to screw those in. You know how to do that by now. Um, and so I'll just take you to the next step. So the next step in the directions say to um, uh, basically drop this, this window in here because you're going to put an overhang on it. But the problem is, look what happens. If you just drop it in here, it's just going to go right out. So um, I'm just going to put a, um, a little, little screw in here just to stop it from sliding so I can finish the, the job. Just put in just, just a little bit. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put those in the window because you're going to see how, how that works in just a second. But basically, drop this in here. You don't need this little foam thing here, so take that off. I'll get that later, but... Okay, so it stops right there. Now I can work on the overhang. Okay, so the next part is just to secure the uh, drip overhang, and this couldn't be any easier. You basically just line it up so it overhangs uh, the edge there a little bit. Um, and it looks kind of even on both sides. This doesn't have to be perfect for my, in my opinion. And then just kind of screw it in. And I'll do one over here. Like this. Go like that. And just make sure that the window fits underneath it. Like that, looks pretty good. You're in business. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so um, now it's time to, to uh, put the inside window on. Um, and they come with these little tracks like this, which you're gonna slot, you know, allows the window to be um, slid up and down. And so um, you can just kind of put those on uh, ahead of time here like this. And I put them right to the edge uh, right to the edge of the uh, the glass there and um, do the same thing on the other do the same thing on the other side like that okay so um, so then all I do now is I'm gonna just kind of put this up so it, I know it covers the window right to the top like you know I'll go maybe a little bit something like that all right get a little bit on the both sides so it doesn't whoop. That looks pretty good. And so all I'm going to do now is put in this side, because I know this works, right? So I'm going to screw in just one of these guys. Let me just make sure this is all the way over here. Good. All right. So we'll just screw in one of these guys. So now that's going to be one side. I'm going to just take this off because we, actually I'll put another screw in. Um, I know I want it to be lined up nicely here. Okay, nice and even so this will work. Perfect. Okay. It keeps, keeps moving a little bit. All right. Like this. Okay, and then screw this guy in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let the window slide out. Okay, like that. That side is perfect, and all I got to do now is finish securing this, and then we'll put the other one up, and it'll be all good. So the shadow blank, shadow blank kit comes with these little um, uh, slot lock devices, and they have, actually they're cool because they got a little bit of tape on the back, so you can position them before you screw them in. You take the cable that's from the black outside window, and I want to line. This is my own technique. I want to line that up right where I don't want the window to slide anymore. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit, like let's say there. Okay. And I want to put this right, on this, right there. All right.
right, so um, this is the third part of the roof, which is really important. So if you recall, we've put the shiplap pine in. We put um, the roll asphalt roofing on top. But this is a flat roof, so water's gonna pool um, and that won't be good. So what I like to do is take just a $25 um, heavy duty tarp from Home Depot. Uh, this one's 12 feet by 10 feet. And um, I just lay the 12 foot side on here and uh, the 10 foot side on this, this side and just kind of bring it in, uh, secure it with some special screws here that are waterproof and I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so here is the screw. This is made for roofing, and you can see there's like a little pla Oops, let me pick that up again. There's a little plastic um, uh, washer thing that kind of makes a nice seal. So um, it's just beautiful for this. And I'm going to secure this on one end, this this, this uh, door end first, make it nice and snug, and then I'll pull it nice and tight. Um, and then this should give us waterproof protection. Uh, this is the roof. Okay, that's one corner, and you can just see this is nice and tight all the way around. This is a heavy-duty tarp. It should be waterproof. So underneath here I have the, um, the roll roofing, the asphalt roofing, with a little bit of flex seal on the joint, and then uh, the, the shiplap pine underneath that, and my stabilizing beams inside, which you saw before. So we should be good to go. I'll give you a little walk around here. Let me just come off the ladder. Okay. And then this side. Okay, so we're going to do some finishing touches uh, to our hunting blind, and that's to, to add a light uh, to, our, uh, to our battery bank. Um, and uh, Basically, all I do is I buy a regular desk lamp right here, okay, and I buy a 12 volt uh, light bulb, and they're like two bucks on on Amazon. And then you basically cut off the uh, you know the, the the prong that goes in the outlet, the standard outlet, and you've got two wires, and one's your um, one's your positive, one's your one's your negative, and uh, basically you just hook these up to your battery. And I'm going to hook these directly up to my, um, my charger, uh, which is already hooked up to the battery. So I'll show you that here. Okay, so basically, um, this is, a, this is a, a charger, and it usually comes with the solar panel that you buy. And you can see here, this is going out this way. This is going into my solar panel. And plus and minus, it's you know, red and black. And then, then from this, uh, you hook up to the battery, which I'll uh, show you down there in just a second. And then you can put a load on, and that's where I'm going to put my light, all right? And uh, really couldn't be any easier. And then this thing basically keeps the, the solar panel from overcharging the battery. Okay. So this is just a standard, um, a standard car battery. Um, and you've got your negative and your positive. And um, I have um, a couple things hooked up. Uh, uh, but the main thing is the charger, which goes here and here. And then I have an extra... Um, uh, uh, socket that I hooked up uh, over here. Let me show you right there. Right there. So I can just plug in various various electronics. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get there's a little like screw here that basically Opens up the channel. I'll show you here. I'll put the I'll put one. In. I don't know. Which, I don't actually know which one is negative or positive. I don't even know if it matters to be honest with you for for this light. So I'm just going to just try this first. Put that in there. We're going to tighten it right there. And I'll do the same thing with this. It's nice and tight. So now I'm going to put the light bulb in. So hopefully you can see this here. I'm just going to screw it right in here. Now, uh, God willing, this thing should light up when I turn this light. There you go. 
all from the power of the sun. Isn't that pretty cool? So just buy, just buy yourself a regular um, desk lamp and just get a 12 volt uh, light bulb, hook it up to your battery however you want, and you'll be in business. I just want to show you one more little light feature I put in uh, that I meant to tell you about before. I'm just going to zoom in it right there. So see it's hanging right there. Um, and that's hooked directly up uh, to a solar panel through through the uh, through the outside there. Um, that's where the that's where the wires go out to the, and I'll show you the outside. But this one goes on automatically when it's dark out and uh, it's not hooked up to my battery bank. So it's kind of like a backup if something happens to my battery bank. Okay, doc. So this is the, the major solar panel that's going to the battery. And this is my dedicated solar panel that's just going to that emergency light just in case I have a problem with the battery system because I don't want to be caught out here with no light. But um, this is not that uh, expensive. I think I got this for about uh, 60 bucks, and it comes with the charger uh, to protect the battery from overcharging. It's called a charge controller, and this thing was like 20 bucks. So. You could probably get your solar system with under 100 bucks. So, there it is. Okay, so let me give you a little tour of the inside of the hunting blind. Um, so, this is one of the windows right here. This is facing out to the field. And you can see here, there's our ceiling. I have a little sign there just to kind of zoom in to let you know whose place it is. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we've got eight feet all along this side, okay? This is where eight by eight blind. And then I put my little table over on the side, and over there we're going to have my 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 desk lamp, the charger on the left, and a little extra port there for some electronics as needed, and our battery down there. And you can actually put a battery bank under there. You could do like two or three batteries. All I really want to do is my phone and that light if I sleep out here. Uh, and I have a little drawer there uh, to store stuff. Okay. So coming along here now, there's our door. That's my tractor out there. And then I put one little um, shelf up there. Um, you can see my Gatorade drink and a little bug spray. And, you know, I can hang some stuff right there. Um, all right, and then, and then basically um, uh, we'll just come around to the other side. And you'll see here uh, American flag because it's all about that. And then we've got my window right there. And then again, this is all eight feet by eight, so then that's eight feet, and then our last window right here. Um, and I want to just back up uh, a second here to show you the the beams on the ceiling, because again, I felt like that was important to do uh, for the weight uh, of the snow and stuff like that. So you know, I cut down the 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 height of the ceiling by one and a half inches, but I did kind of feel like it was important. Um, and then again, if I also, I'll close the door here, you'll see that there's a window on this side here. So let me just let me just do that real quickly. Okay, so there's the the window on the inside of the door. So now I can see on all four sides. There it is on the front. Again, I've got windows on every side. Just giving you a walk around. Final product. See, it looks good. Okay, okay. Well, I want to thank you all for watching this video. We're done. We've got our solar panel system, our battery, um, and we're ready to hunt. This has just been an amazing adventure. I can't believe when you guys join me through the whole thing, so you know what I went through. I uh, started in the winter, uh, brought all the stuff out here, and it all comes together here. And now the dreams get to be made. So remember that um, God's with you. I want to thank you for joining the Mediocre Hunter. And uh, I'll see you soon.